Everyone's running journey is different. As we first get started, we may not suddenly see the results we were hoping for. Don't be disheartened. I suffered the same problem by making some small mistakes. Hey, I'm Jack an everyday runner hoping to help others learn a little bit more about running. Today, I'm going to cover five common mistakes beginner runners make and how we can fix those. Let's get into it. Many beginner runners can often be too motivated to get out there for a run without putting much thought into the shoes they're going to be wearing. Not only can wearing improper shoes while running be uncomfortable and potentially cause blisters, it can actually lead to larger issues such as injuries like shin splints, plantar fasciitis, and also even Achilles tendonitis. Improper running shoes won't do you any good for your performance either. It's why we don't see elite athletes wearing bands whilst they're running. But also, us everyday runners also need to be using the right equipment, hence the importance of investing in a quality pair of running shoes. It's why I also recommend any new runner to go to a specialist running shoe shop to ensure you're fitted with the correct shoe for your foot, as well as your stride style. It may be a more supportive shoe or potentially a neutral shoe. For some new runners, they may find themselves running every day of the week, only to end up on the couch the second week following. Don't get me wrong though, it's amazing to get out there for a run. However, when we're first starting, we need to take a conservative and balanced approach to ensure our body is adapting to the training load we're putting it under. Because ultimately, working our way into running ensures we don't get injured. And also, it allows us to continue running for the long term. And even in a rarer case, find that some beginner runners will automatically just sign up for a half marathon and God forbid, even a marathon without really considering what training they're gonna be doing and just going out to run the race. That's a big no-no in the running world and it's likely to leave you injured. I myself relate to this point of overtraining when I first started running last year, finding myself getting two kilometers into a threshold run and having to stop because breakfast just didn't wanna sit down. Not pretty Jack. But this is also where I was humbled as a beginner runner to realize that running is a long-term investment and you need to start small. You can't suddenly run a personal best in just one night. One way to solve this issue of overtraining is to have a training plan. And this doesn't matter if you're looking to just get into running casually or are looking to train for an event. A training plan will help you build that level of fitness over a certain period of time and allow your body to make those adaptions as needed to ensure you can increase your training load later down the track. A very common training plan that many beginner runners choose for is the Couch to 5K program. Let me know if you'd like to see a video on the Couch to 5K training program, as there are many different varieties out there to choose from. No matter how far or how often you're running, you need to be fueling yourself properly before and after your runs. And for those looking at getting into distances such as the half marathon and marathon, even fueling yourself during your long runs. Poor nutrition can often lead runners to not having the energy required to actually get through a run or a training session they have planned. Usually through a run, they may start to be feeling fatigued or even lethargic. A lack of essential nutrients, vitamins, and minerals can affect a range of functions, such as your muscle function, oxygen transport throughout your body while exercising, and also your hydration levels. As a result, this can lead to poorer performance and slower progress towards your goals. I know I've personally suffered from having a cheeky takeaway meal the night before a long run and feeling it in my stomach the next day. Now, while you don't need the perfect runner's diet with all of your macros mapped out, you just need to think forward as to what you'll need to fuel your body with. For example, if it's a long run on a Sunday, you'd want to ensure you are loading up on your carbohydrates throughout the Saturday, as well as your electrolyte levels to ensure you can get through that entire long run, even if you're going to be fueling yourself before a session. For example, my pre-run breakfast go-to before one of my long runs on a Sunday is a bagel with either peanut butter or banana or even honey spread on top. That way I've topped up my carb levels to ensure I've got enough energy to get me through my long run. And also, what does after your long run look like? Are you going to be having breakfast with a friend that's usually high in protein? Or are you getting straight home to make yourself a protein smoothie to get into you to speed up your recovery process? It pays just to put some forward thoughts into what you're gonna be fueling your body with. Running with poor form can lead to inefficiency and increase the likelihood of getting an injury. And while all of us runners have different techniques, we just want to ensure we're avoiding poor form mistakes such as over hunching, heel striking, over striding, and tensing up. For me, as I got into the further distances of my marathon training program, 
noticed in my final few kilometers I'd start to be hunching over and not looking up as to where I was running towards. Often I'd be getting headaches straight after my long run with all the strain I was putting on my neck. So when it comes to proper running form, Focus on running with an upright posture with your head up. Land midfoot for proper weight distribution. Shorten your strides, relax your body, and focus on your breathing. As you run, do mental check-ins to ensure you're keeping these in mind and listen to your body. Strength training can also assist you with improving your running form too. It can be disheartening when you first start running to see all these runners just shooting past you at blistering speeds, but I want you to get this thought out of your head right now. We all start our running journeys at different stages, so I want you to focus on not comparing yourself to others in this initial part of your running journey. Focus on you and the goals you've set yourself, whether that's completing the training program, consistency with getting out there with your running or even if it's just getting 30 minutes of exercise in a day. I myself like to find the joy in running, whether that's admiring the nature around me, trying to film these somewhat coolish GoPro shots or even just having a good old yarn to myself and laughing at myself. I'm not a pro runner hitting these crazy times or winning any events, but for me, running is my medicine and it helps keep my mental health in check. It's also a big reason why I continue to run after my first marathon. Be inspired by yourself and allow yourself to grow over your running journey. I promise you, it's such a rewarding experience seeing yourself going from one shorter distance to a longer one, and then a longer one, and then even a longer one or completing a milestone distance. Heck, even noticing yourself getting faster as you go further down into your training program. You've got this. So there we have it. These are five common mistakes beginner runners can often make and how we can resolve them. I know for me too, personally, I made all of these five mistakes when I first started getting into running full time last year. And to this day, I've still got a lot to improve on, like fueling myself for a marathon properly. Remember, we're all at different stages in our running journey, so make sure to enjoy it when you get out there for a run. I'll also quickly throw in that you may not see a video or two for the next couple of weeks from me as I'm currently in the process of moving, but hoping to still get the content out to you on a weekly basis just might be a little bit interrupted for the time being if you're keen to stick around for a little longer why not check out this video here i'm jack and i'll see you next time catch up